Welcome to Training in Instructional Design. This will be a lecture on Web 2.0 and social networking tools. The learning objectives for the Web 2.0 and Social Networking Tools Unit are number 1. Discuss the strength and weakness of social learning as a training approach. Number 2. Select appropriate social media tools to support social learning and training. Number 3. List guidelines for using web conferencing applications. Number 4. Describe the characteristics of Web 2.0 tools that can be used in training. And 5. Discuss mobile learning uses in training. The topic in this unit, social learning using Web 2.0 social tools, is relatively new to corporate training, but is an appropriate topic for a health information technology workforce training curriculum. These training approaches unleash the knowledge and experience of individual employees, who then create training materials that can be used by other employees. Hospitals and health corporations were late to implement formal training management systems, while other highly regulated, Compliance-heavy industries, such as banking, had embraced this technology for many years. Today, information-intensive organizations are introducing social learning, along with traditional learning management systems, LMS-based training. One approach to EHR implementation training that incorporates the old and the new is to begin with more traditional training methods, such as the training the trainer approach and formal classroom training, then use web-based applications to support social learning. Formally prepared training materials can be repurposed for on-demand, just-in-time training. The training is more relevant when the employee recognizes the need. You can record the training presentation or make available the training videos made from screen captures of the EHR system. These resources, along with printed materials, can be used for on-the-job training and help desk support. In the next several minutes, we will explore social learning and other approaches to training that can be used for EHR implementations and for a more holistic approach to training and professional development in a healthcare organization. Blended learning, as the name implies, uses two methods of training, classroom and online learning, and takes advantage of the strength of each approach. A classroom-based session introduces the material to the learners and sets the stage for how the rest of the course will progress. This in-person session also helps to build a sense of community among the learners as they get to know each other and remember people by physical attributes. Follow-up sessions are conducted online, either synchronous or asynchronous. Lessons are constructed either to deliver additional content or as case-based learning where the students apply knowledge learned in the introductory sessions. The additional content can be recorded lectures or readings from the website or prepared documents. Short quizzes and self-assessments are an effective method to reinforce the basic knowledge and concepts. The student can be presented with case-based problems, either individually or in teams. Tools that support and foster discussion among the learners and with instructors can help clarify concepts and deepen and broaden the understanding of the learners. In simple terms, Social learning is about using social media technologies to close the gap that exists between the training slash learning the enterprise provides and the informal learning that is always happening within the clinical setting. Some characteristics of social learning that take place every day in the workplace are informal transfer of knowledge, phone calls to coworkers when you are looking for information, a walk to the next office, water cooler discussions for colleagues, the learning is unstructured and is user-initiated. Social learning is the most common form of learning in an organization. Social learning may not seem like a good training approach, but it has many things in common with the principles of adult learning that we discussed in the first couple of units of this component. Some strengths of social learning in the workplace are reduces training costs by leveraging the workers to actually do the work and make the training materials. Now anyone in an organization can create and distribute learning materials such as short video, fact sheets, a PowerPoint slide deck. The content is relevant and timely and personalized by the employees working on the job. There is a faster response to the needs of staff and the changes that are taking place in the organization. Most adult learners prefer information and on-the-job training compared to classroom training. If this can be accomplished with technology instead of individual mentoring by a manager, the organization can reduce the overall costs of training. 
Of course, there are weaknesses to social learning environments. Some of these are no central location to keep the learning objects and knowledge, lack of standards and structure to the learning, resource quality is variable, the content of the learning is not validated, the social learning may not align with organizational goals. The main objective of the new training department is to enable knowledge to flow in the organization. The primary function of learning professionals within this new work model is connecting and communicating based on three core processes: facilitating collaborative work and learning amongst workers, especially as peers, sensing patterns and helping to develop emergent work and learning practices, working with management to fund and develop appropriate tools and processes for workers. An example of social learning in a corporation. Can be seen in the approach taken by British Telecom and Accenture, which resulted in a project named Dare to Share. It does not replace the company's existing learning programs, but rather augments them with informal learning opportunities and with social collaborative capabilities. An enterprise YouTube system with other social media tools, including Microsoft SharePoint, that makes it easy for employees to create, share, find, and comment on learning objects. Social learning will not be successful with just a technology platform. The organization must create and nurture a culture of an attitude in which employees are encouraged to experiment, collaborate, share, and communicate their knowledge and experiences. In order for social learning to be successful, it must be someone's formal job. There needs to be a champion or leader to direct the learning and support the participants. In addition, the organization must value the contributions and reward excellence in this aspect of the employee's job duties. Now we will look more closely at the social media and Web 2.0 tools that are being used in social learning. Some of these tools you are already familiar with, but you probably have never thought about how they can be used in training. American Society for Training and Development, partnered with the Institute for Corporate Productivity (I4CP). To explore the connection between social media and work-related learning, findings from the study *The Rise of Social Media* reveal that although using social media technologies can boost productivity, most organizations have yet to fully integrate and formalize the use of social media in the workplace. In this study, the researchers developed a tool to measure the impact of social media tools: the Social Media Benefits Index (SMBI). This tool was used to seek answer to the research question. Within the context of your organization, to what extent do social media tools help you to accomplish the following: learn truly useful things, learn more in less time, get better work done, get more work done? Consistently in all four areas, younger workers give social media tools more importance in their work. There are many examples of social media tools, and the following list of common tools from the Rise of Social Media report. Is arranged in descending importance: share workspaces, social networks, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Wikis, blogs, podcasts, YouTube and Flickr shared media, microblogging, for example, Twitter, social bookmarking, such as Delicious, and of least importance, Second Life and other virtual environments. How do social learning and social media tools, which support informal learning, Work with learning content management systems (LCMS). From our previous unit, we learned that LCMSs support course enrollment. They hold SCORM compliant reusable learning objects, and they track and assess the learners. In the LCMS model, learners are discrete individuals linked to specific learning objects. Social learning creates a network or web of learners and a wide range of informal and formal learning opportunities. In our discussion of social learning, I've mentioned various social media tools, and many of these tools you may be already familiar with as Web 2.0 applications and websites you use in your personal life. Most Web 2.0 tools have three characteristics: first, they are comprised of user-generated content; second, they have interoperability with other web-based applications; and third, they support collaboration with other users. The characteristics and features of Web 2.0 tools make them natural social learning and informal training tools. Let us look at a few examples. Learners in a healthcare organization could rate and review various training objectives in a similar way that Amazon.com users rate books.
staff and healthcare providers could create their own content, such as short instruction manuals or even short training videos in the manner of YouTube or eHow.com. Employees can instantly post questions and get answers, synchronously and asynchronously, using tools similar to Facebook, Twitter, and a Google search. In addition to the Web 2.0 features and social applications that you may already use, there are other general classes of applications that are useful in training. These are wikis, collaborative websites that enable users to add, edit, and share multimedia content using basic word processor style tools. Blogs, a website usually maintained by an individual where the content is displayed in reverse chronological order. Shared workspace, a web environment to share files that support other collaboration tools and communication. We have learned that videos are a valuable tool that trainers use when preparing courses, and we also learned that video is a valuable tool for learners and works in a social learning environment. Here are a few basic principles that can help trainer and workers produce inexpensive, effective training videos. Keep the video short, about three to five minutes. Crop the video tightly so the most important image is large and clear on the video frame. Use a tripod to reduce camera movement. Reduce background noise, both extraneous sounds and visual distractions. Besides distracting the learner, they also unnecessarily increase the video size. Good light. Choosing a camera. Evaluate your needs first and purchase equipment based on your findings. While traditional camcorders record superior video and audio, they may not be necessary or appropriate in certain situations, so simple pocket video cameras work well for this application. Lighting. Normal room lighting is suitable for most cameras, but avoid low light situations. Often, a well-placed desk lamp can boost the lighting suitably. Avoid having a bright light behind your subject, such as a window. Instead, try to position the subject so they are illuminated by the brightest light source. Audio. Audio is a critical component to creating a useful video. If your camera has an external mic input, consider purchasing either a wired or wireless lapel mic that can be placed on the person speaking. If your camera only has a built-in mic, be aware that the closer the camera is to the audio source, the better the resulting audio will be. If you are too far away from the audio source, the resulting audio may be ununderstandable, and therefore your entire video may be unusable. Also, try to avoid manipulating the camera while recording, as any handling noise will be very pronounced on the video. Shooting. Use a tripod to avoid shake. Freestanding models are good for added height. Desktop models are good for small spaces and portability. If you must shoot without a tripod, don't walk and shoot. Stand still and prop your body or arms against something solid to keep camera shake to a minimum. Avoid using zoom on pocket cameras, as most models employ digital zoom, which produces a poor quality image. Instead, physically move the camera and tripod closer to the subject if possible. When recording, let the camera run for at least five seconds before asking the subject to speak. At the end of the recording, let the camera run for an extra five seconds after the speaker is finished speaking. This will allow a useful buffer if you intend to edit the video later on. When recording, keep an eye on the camera to make sure the recording hasn't stopped unexpectedly and that the subject is always in the frame. Editing. Most cameras come with simple video editing software that should be suitable for most needs. Other inexpensive options are available such as Apple iMovie, Mac, Adobe Premiere Elements, Mac or Windows, and Windows Live Movie Maker, Windows. Distribution. Appropriate distribution methods may depend on requirements and restrictions placed on the video itself. For example, while online video sites such as YouTube and Vimeo are good resources for distributing video to wide audience, they may not be appropriate for videos with sensitive content, such as medical videos that are covered by HIPAA regulations. In such instances, you should evaluate what methods will work for you, such as hosting the video on a secure server within your organization or physically distributing the video on CD or DVD to trusted sources. Web conferencing has been available and in use for many years. 
Live web-based courses are now seen as a key ingredient of training programs, an ingredient that is beginning to equal the importance of other approaches. Web conferencing also is growing as a supplement to other asynchronous training methods. This network-based technology is increasingly easy to use, but you must first be comfortable with the technology and make sure that all participants in the web conference have the appropriate technology infrastructures. Test the equipment and applications early and test often. Be sure to have a good network connection. There are many web conferencing applications and hardware platforms, so make sure users have access to the system you are using. Check to make sure any browser plugins or special software has been loaded on the computers, and some systems require dedicated hardware. Once you get the web conferencing technology in place, here are some tips to hosting an effective presentation. You will notice that many of these tips are similar to good practices for an effective PowerPoint presentation. Use large, bold fonts. Limit your text to six to eight lines per page. Use plain backgrounds that contrast text. Avoid complex animations or fast motion, since they may result in jerky video. Provide learning objectives to your audience in advance of the live session. Check background room noise. Is there a lot of street noise or people speaking in the hallway? The maximum length of your session should be about 60 minutes. Limit audience size so everyone can see the video screen. Check time zones for the host and the recipient learning sites if you are doing the training over long distances. Periodically check with the attendees at the remote site to see if they have any questions and to make sure the technology is functioning properly. Plan how to close the session. Now let us look at one more non-traditional training and learning approach that you probably use every day. M-learning or mobile learning. One definition of M-learning is learning or training on a portable device smaller than a laptop. Mobile learning decreases limitation of learning location with the mobility of general portable devices, including but not limited to handheld computers, MP3 players, and mobile phones. M-learning focuses on the mobility of the learner, interacting with portable technologies, and learning that reflects a focus on how society and its institutions can accommodate and support an increasingly mobile population. What are some of the advantages and challenges of creating training materials for mobile devices? Advantages The device as a learning platform is low cost and widely available. The learning can be placed directly into the work environment, making M-Learning a contextual and exploratory learning platform. Because the device is small and mobile, learning can take place anytime and at any place. Smartphones can be used to store and deliver reference and training documents. They can also be used to deliver time-sensitive learning quickly to a large group of users. The delivery of small, task-related learning objects, micro-learning, is very effective in busy clinical settings, and the mobile devices are well-suited for this type of learning. Challenges Technical challenges include Connectivity and battery life Screen size and key size Ability for authors to visualize mobile phones for delivery Possibilities to meet required bandwidth for non-stop fast streaming Number of files slash assets formats supported by a specific device Content security or copyright issue from authoring group Multiple standards, multiple screen sizes, multiple operating systems Reworking existing e-learning materials for mobile platforms. Social learning leads us to a more personal level of learning that is fundamental to what it means to be a professional healthcare provider. Some healthcare enterprises view individual professional development and continuing professional education part of their training missing in addition to the system-wide EHR training and compliance training. This holistic approach to training and education builds on two additional educational approaches, individualized learning plans and learning portfolios that contain evidence of competency and personal reflection on learning. These learning plans and portfolios contain two distinct aspects of learning for a healthcare professional, training and personal professional development. Areas of training and educations that should be included when designing a holistic training approach include 
continuing medical and nursing education, which includes clinical topics, certification and compliance such as billing, HIPAA, infection control, clinical care, training on care plans and treatment protocols, including continuous quality improvement and meaningful use, job task training, which includes how to use a new EHR system, and HR training, which covers a broad range of topics, including conflict resolution, time management, sexual harassment, and many more. Personal development includes all the items mentioned in the training big picture, but the individual learning plan or curriculum is designed by the individual learner and includes other informal and social approaches to learning and personal development. These include the employee and manager negotiate what should be included in the professional personal learning plan, identifying what formal training courses the employee should take, more senior employees mentoring junior employees, and knowledge sharing among all employees in the organization. As we conclude this component, you should reflect on the importance of targeting, formal training for an EHR, and how this training approach needs to be integrated with more holistic social learning approaches if an EHR is to achieve meaningful use. You could be sustained by a diet of a nutrient-complete human chow. But how much richer and more meaningful would your life be with a diet that stimulates your senses and expands your views of people and cultures? Healthcare is complex, quickly changing, and information-intensive environment. Design your training to meet these challenges. According to Jane Hart from the Center for Learning and Performance Technologies, learning and development now needs to concern itself as much with helping employees become dynamic, agile, self-directed smart learners as with creating learning solutions for them. Smart learners develop trusted resources and networks, use the most appropriate tools, and have the right mix of skills to make effective use of these tools and resources. This concludes the lecture on the Introduction to Training in Adult Learning. In this final unit of Component 20, we explore the exciting and evolving technologies used in Web 2.0 and social networking tools. These applications and apps can be used to extend the learning outside the traditional classroom. Many Web 2.0 tools have applications and training, and with a little ingenuity, you can find innovative ways to improve retention and deepen the learning by using wikis, blogs, and other collaboration tools. Web conferencing can extend train to remote locations and reduce training costs. Mobile learning technologies can make training accessible anytime and in any place, just in time learning. And to capstone your training initiatives, you may want to consider creating a curriculum of multiple learning experiences, which can be combined to create a personalized employee learning plan and create a self-directed learner who continues to learn and develop throughout their lives.